Here at SparkFun, you've heard me talk quite a lot about ESP32 modules and boards. They're a favorite, and not just of mine. ESP32's footprint in the world of IoT has been skyrocketing, and their versatility, scalability, and wireless capability have made them one of the most popular and versatile chips in the market. Now, if you look through our catalog, you'll see that we offer multiple boards with the ESP32 at their heart. Why so many? Well, there are quite a few variations on this module. Instead of releasing a single ESP32 module that was bloated with every possible functionality, Espressif has released, and continues to release, a series of more lightweight ESP32 modules. Now, each of these has certain strengths, and today I want to go over each of these different modules and what some of those strengths are and what they can do. The modules we'll be looking at today include the ESP32, 32UE, and 32E, the ESP32 C3, ESP32 C6, ESP32 DA, the ESP32 Pico Mini, the ESP32 S2, and the ESP32 S3. Before we dive into the specs of each of these, I want to give you a quick overview and comparison of what we have here. Now, as you can see, ESP32 modules come in a variety of shapes and sizes. We have the standard room footprint, which will vary depending on the type of antenna it uses. We have the smaller mini footprint that you can see here on multiple modules, and the larger DA footprint, which is really only larger because of its dual antennas. Now, I've added a quarter here for scale, or for those of you not living in the US, I've added a bot. I want to take a minute and give you a quick comparison here. So let's look at C6 modules, uh, the C6 room and the C6 mini side by side. Now, the C6 room measures 25.5 by 18 millimeters, while the C6 mini measures about 16 and 3 quarters by 13 and a quarter millimeters. Now, usually this smaller footprint will come at a cost of RAM. In the case of the C6, the full-size room module has 16 megabytes of RAM, where the mini module offers 4 megabytes. Module sizes can vary, too, depending on antenna type. For example, the basic 32 module with a PCB trace antenna measures 25.5 by 18 millimeters, while the same module designed for an external U.FL antenna measures 19.25 by 18 millimeters. Let's take a closer look at all of these modules now and see what they have to offer. We'll start with the basic ESP3232E or the ESP3232UE, depending on whether or not it has a PCB trace antenna or a U.FL antenna. Now, this is the module that we use on our Thing Plus ESP32 Room, Thing Plus ESP32 Room U.FL, our Micromod ESP32 processor, our small ESP32 processor board, both of our SparkFun Data Logger IoT boards, and our IoT Red board. At its core is a Tensilica Extensa LX6 dual core processor running at 240 MHz. Now, all these boards have 520K of SRAM, and while the thing has 4 MB of flash, both the Micromod and Small have 16 MB of flash storage. They've all got Wi Fi 802.11 BGN and Bluetooth 4.2 BREDR, as well as Bluetooth Low Energy, or BLE. Features of this module include I squared C, full duplex I squared S, 10 bit ADC, DAC, SPY, UART, PWM, and Ethernet MAC interface for external PHY. As far as power consumption, there are of course a number of variables that contribute, so I'm just going to give you the extreme ends. There are of course hundreds if not thousands of variables that will come into play when determining your current draw. So I'll try to give you the maximum current draw for each module, which will usually mean transmitting over 802.11b at the highest possible draw, say 1 megabit per second at 20.5 dBm, and also the deepest sleep draw, if possible with just RTC memory powered up and RTC peripherals powered down. So, for the ESP3232E and 32UE, peak draw on this module will be about 379 milliamps while actively transmitting as hard and fast as possible, and the data sheet lists the deep sleep current at less than 5 microamps. Any of these boards would be great for all-around prototyping, especially with wireless or IoT projects. Think basic smart home stuff like smart lights, smart plugs, or smart sensors. The ESP32C3 is a great choice for low power designs, and we use it on three of our boards. The SparkFun Pro Micro ESP32C3, the ESP32C3 Room Development Board, and the ESP32C3 Mini Development Board. The ESP32C3 modules have at their core a 32-bit RISC-V single-core processor running at 160 MHz with 400K of SRAM and 4 MB of flash. Wi-Fi is 802.11 BGN, and you've got access to both Bluetooth 4.2 and BLE. It offers external flash support, and it supports RISC-V ISA, 6-bit ADC, SPY, UART, I2C, Ethernet MAC, and PWM. 
For the ESP32C3, peak draw on this module will be about 345 milliamps while actively transmitting as hard and fast as possible, and the data sheet lists the deep sleep current at 5 microamps. These C3 modules are a great choice for things like low-power IoT applications. And with its RISC-V architecture, it's optimized for low current draw, and that makes it a great choice for things like battery-operated IoT projects or wearables. We currently offer a pair of boards with the ESP32C6 variant, those being the SparkFun ThingPlus ESP32C6 and the SparkFun Quick Pocket Development Board ESP32C6. Now, these two boards use slightly different variants of the C6, but they're pretty much the same thing. The ThingPlus ESP32C6 uses the ESP32C6 Room 1, and the Quick Pocket Dev Board uses the ESP32C6 Mini 1. Now, they both sport a 32-bit RISC-V single-core processor running at 160 MHz with 512K of high-power SRAM and 16K of low-power SRAM. The primary difference here lies in the amount of flash memory, with the Mini on the Dev Board offering 4 MB and the Room on the Thing Plus offering 16 MB. Now, the C6 uses Wi-Fi 6, and on the Bluetooth side, it's capable of Bluetooth 5 LE, Zigbee and Thread, and Matter. This module also supports 12-bit ADC, SPY, UART, low-power UART, I2C, low-power I2C, I2S, and PWM. With the ESP32C6, you should see a peak draw of about 382 milliamps while actively transmitting wirelessly at full bore, and the datasheet lists the sleep current at 7 microamps. The best use cases I can think of for the C6 modules would be mesh networks or high-performance IoT applications. With its support of Wi-Fi 6, this module is geared towards applications that require high data rates and improved efficiency, like a smart home hub, or really any project that requires constant high streams of data. Let's take a look now at the ESP32DA module. The DA here stands for dual antenna. The two complementary PCB antennas face different directions, allowing users to develop IoT applications that need stable connectivity over a broad spectrum, or to deploy Wi-Fi in challenging or even dangerous environments, or to overcome communication problems in Wi-Fi dead zones. This module uses an extensive dual-core 32-bit LX6 processor at speeds up to 240 MHz, with 448K of ROM for booting and core functions, 520K of SRAM for data and instructions, and 16K of SRAM and RTC, plus 8 meg of spy flash. The module offers 802.11 BGN Wi-Fi, plus Bluetooth V4.2 BR, EDR, and Bluetooth LE. There's a 40 MHz crystal oscillator, and the module supports GPIO, UART, SPY, SDIO, I2C, I2S, LED PWM, motor PWM, IR, pulse counter, capacitive touch sensor, ADC, DAC, and TWAI, which is compatible with ISO 11898-1, things like CAN specification 2.0. And this module is pin compatible with the ESP32 Room 32E, so if you decide that the project you developed on that chip needs dual built-in antennas, this should be a simple drop-in replacement. With this dual antenna module, peak draw will be about 379 milliamps while actively transmitting as hard and fast as possible, with deep sleep running the RTC timer only at 5 microamps. If you're prototyping with an ESP32 and you know that your final design is going to require a smaller footprint, allow me to direct your attention to the ESP32 Mini Pico 02. Now, this is the module that we use on our SparkFun ESP32 Quick Pro Mini, as well as the SparkFun Blue Smurf V2. Like several of the others, this one has an embedded extensive dual-core 32-bit LX6 microprocessor capable of speeds up to 240 MHz. It boasts 448K of ROM for booting and core functions, 520K of SRAM for data and instructions, 16K of SRAM and RTC, 8 MB of SPY flash, and 2 MB of PSRAM. It combines the high density of DRAM with the ease of use of SRAM, and like the Springform pans in my kitchen, isn't always necessary, but when you do need it, it's a lifesaver. It's got an onboard PCB antenna for dual wireless connectivity, 802.11 BGN Wi-Fi with AMPDU and AMSDU aggregation, plus Bluetooth V4.2 BREDR and Bluetooth LE. Peripheral support includes GPIO, UART, SPY, I2C, I2S, LED PWM, motor PWM, IR, pulse counter, capacitive touch sensor, ADC, DAC, TWAI, compatible with ISO 11898-1, and Ethernet MAC. Additionally, it has its own 40 MHz crystal oscillator. Current consumption for this module, when transmitting over 802.11b, 20 MHz, 1 megabit per second at 19.5 dBm, will peak at 368 mA, 
while at the other end of the spectrum, sleep mode will see this module draw less than 5 microamps. This super low current draw, along with its diminutive size, makes it great for battery powered projects and wearables. Next, I want to look at a pair of the ESP32S varieties, the S2 and S3. Now, both of these modules offer significant improvement over the original ESP32 in things like power consumption, performance, security, and peripheral support, with each catering to slightly different application needs and requirements. First, let's look at the S2. The ESP32 S2 module has an embedded Extensa single core 32 bit LX7 microprocessor running at up to 240 megahertz, and it's used on our ThingPlus ESP32 S2 room. This single core is a great option if cost is a strong concern. Now it offers 128K of ROM, 320K of SRAM, 16K of SRAM and RTC, and 4 meg of SPI flash. Wireless connectivity on this module is via 802.11 BGN Wi Fi with AMPDU and AMSDU aggregation. Now, if you're wondering what that even means, it has to do with overhead from control information like protocol headers that are part of the 802.11 protocol and can significantly reduce performance and speed of packet transfers, particularly on smaller packets. Frame aggregation allows multiple data packs to be sent on a single 802.11 transmission, thus reducing the number of contention periods, inter-frame spaces, and protocol headers necessary, and increasing your network's overall throughput. Now, if that didn't make anything even a little bit more clear, it basically means that your IoT data is going to be transferred more quickly, due most likely to magic. Hardware interfaces on this module include GPIO, SPI, LCD, UART, I2C, I2S, I squared S, camera interface, that's right, camera interface, IR, pulse counter, LED PWM, TWAITM, compatible with ISO 11898-1, USB OTG 1.1, ADC, DAC, touch sensor, and temperature sensor. The power consumption for this module is a little bit lower at the top end, but a little bit higher at the bottom end. Head down and crashing forward with hard and fast Wi-Fi transmission, the ESP32 S2 peaks at only about 310 milliamps, and the datasheet lists the sleep current at about 20 microamps. As for the ESP32 S3, or more specifically the ESP32 S3 Mini, the module we use on our ThingPlus ESP32 S3, this uses the Extensa Dual Core 32-bit LX7 processor at speeds of up to 240 megahertz, with 384K of ROM for booting and core functions, 512K of SRAM for data and instructions, and 16K of SRAM and RTC, plus 4 meg of SPI flash and 2 meg of PS RAM. Now I've mentioned PS RAM before, but it's really just starting to make its way into the makerspace for those of you who are not yet familiar with it. PS RAM stands for Pseudostatic Random Access Memory, and it's a dynamic RAM with built-in refresh and address control circuitry, which makes it behave more like static RAM or SRAM. Put simply, it combines the high density of DRAM with the ease of use of SRAM. Will you need to use it on every project? No, absolutely not. But it's one of those things that, while you won't always need it, when you do need it, nothing else will really do. Now for wireless connectivity, this module offers 802.11 BGN Wi-Fi with the same AMPDU and MSDU aggregation that's found on the S2 module. Bluetooth on this module offers Bluetooth 5 LE and Bluetooth Mesh. Plus, there's an internal coexistence mechanism between Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which allows them to share the same antenna. This module offers more peripheral interfaces than the S2 and includes GPIO, SPI, LCD interface, camera interface, UART, I2C, I2S, remote control, pulse counter, LED PWM, USB 1.1 OTG, USB serial JTAG controller, MCPWM, SDIO host, GDMA, TWAI controller compatible with ISO 11898-1, uh, again, like CAN specification 2.0, ADC, touch sensor, temperature sensor, timers, and watchdogs. For the ESP32 S3, peak draw on this module will be about 355 milliamps while actively transmitting and hard and fast as possible, and the datasheet lists the sleep current at 7 microamps. It's a powerhouse and offers you a ton of options when designing and creating your project. So this is in no way an exhaustive list, especially when it comes to the features and specs of each of these modules. I know there are things that you might want to know about that I didn't mention here. Uh, for example, I didn't mention the cryptographic accelerators of each of these modules, their similarities and differences. Additionally, I know that power draw, current consumption, is a big thing to worry about when you're designing a project, especially if it's going to rely on battery power or have a power source that's hard to access. Now, I tried to give you both ends of the spectrum, the high and the low. 
But these data sheets list current draw over up to 30 different scenarios. And to be honest, if I took the time to go through all of those for each and every one of these modules, this video would require an intermission. I've said it before, but I feel strongly enough about it that I'm happy to say it again. ESP32 are probably my favorite family of microcontroller modules. And honestly, even if Espressive stopped developing new modules today, I'd be happy to use these for all of my projects. But I happen to know that Espressive is continuing to develop new ESP32 modules, sometimes because they want to keep up with new and advancing technology, and sometimes because they have created that new and advancing technology. Now, these modules are great for IoT projects, and with things like Wi-Fi 6, a Bluetooth mesh, and Matter support, they are pretty much future-proofing your projects. Now, keep an eye here for more and upcoming ESP32 news, and I promise you the future will hold more and upcoming ESP32 news. As always, stay safe, be kind, and happy hacking.